much and then insisting he didn't do it. But you're still going to push an innocent plea? Even though Okubo-san is the one who'll suffer for it? If he's really not guilty, he won't have to. I'll win. But to be perfectly honest, this is my first criminal case. What? Civil cases have been a mixed bag for me, too. I've actually lost more than I've won. Is that so? Apparently, a smart lawyer would never even consider an innocent plea in this case. Guess it's a good thing that I'm not so smart then, because I honestly believe I can win. Terasawa-san, were you close to Okubo-kun? I spoke to him pretty often, yes. I would see him around the ward all the time. And what did you think of him? Did he seem like the kind of guy who'd do something like this? I'm sorry. The director told us not to say too much. Wait! If you know anything that can help, just get in touch, okay? I'll do whatever it takes to set Okubo-kun free. But I can't do it alone. Just... give it some thought, Terasawa-san. Just now, we went to the ADDC. Thought I should have a look at things with my own eyes. And? How did it go? There's no chance you walk. You're practically a lost cause. Hey. Yagami-sensei, is that what you think? It's like this, Okubo. You tell me you're innocent, and I'll fight to the end. I really have nothing to lose by helping you out. It's just like I told you. Whoever did it is framing me. On the day of the crime, you were in the general war at the ADDC, yes? Starting at 8 a.m., you went around to each room and gathered the linens. Yes. Nobody would dispute that. And after that, you covered Wakusan's nose and mouth, suffocated him, and then carted him out in the laundry bin. That's not true, believe me! And I do. So when you went down to leave the center at 10 a.m. after gathering the linens, you realized there was a body hidden in the truck. Yes. That's what happened. Then, after debating whether or not to report the body, you chose to hide it in the mountains. I had a criminal assault on my record. I knew the police would have suspected me if I went to them. Aren't you forgetting the bad blood you had with Wakusan? Huh? Bad blood? What are you talking about? Three days before the murder, Wakusan claimed Okubo-kun here punched him and stole his wallet. They told me all about it at the center. When did you even ask? While you were busy chatting up Terasawa-chan. <laughs> even if I bitch about it, I'm still damn good at my job. Well, Okubo-kun, did you take his wallet or...? Not quite. They call it delusion of theft. It's a symptom of dementia. You think something's been stolen from you, then blame the first person you see. Not the easiest thing to deal with, right? Someone accuses you of theft for no reason? Must have been a shock. So when Wakusan tried to hit you, you just about hit him back. But I didn't hit him. No. You murdered him. I wouldn't kill a man over something like that. Ah. I wish I could believe you, pal. Come on. Bokun, you got a record of violence. It wasn't me, I swear. Somebody set me up. Please, you have to believe me. Whoever did this is laughing at all of us right now. <sighs> Calm down. Yagami-sensei, do you believe me? I do. Next time, come alone. Fine, I can take a hint. You and Yagami Sensei can cuddle up all you want.
Hey, you know that nurse, Terasawa-san? Cute girl. It sounded like she was worried about you. Bet you'd have a chance with her once you get out of here. I don't know. If you'll excuse me. So Shintani just left you hanging, huh? He's gotta learn some damn patience. Maybe so. But this is my case now. I can handle it myself. Huh. Okay. Yagami-san. Hmm? Have you seen Mafia lately? Well, where's this coming from? She's just not that great with men. I suggest you be more assertive. Right. Okay. Uh, you mean that friend of yours, Saurikun? She's got Shintani all riled up. Said he'd have been nicer to you if he knew you had friends who looked like her. <laughs> Jackass. Hey, nothing's official yet, guys. Regardless, keep it on the down low, okay? Yet? That word says more than you think. <laughs> I'll keep my lips sealed. Mafia Kuhn's a prosecutor, right? Isn't it kind of taboo for her to date a defense attorney? Can we not do this? Either way, guess the Okobo case comes first. Pleading innocent, yeah? That's the plan. What is your plan here? This isn't gonna be an easy win. Well, I'm working on that. There's one piece of evidence that still bothers me. Yeah? And what's that? It's the hospital room the victim was staying in. This is the last place Wakusan was seen before he disappeared. The window doesn't open, so the only way out is through the door. No one saw him leave, though, even though there are always people in the halls. And the only one who entered the room was Okubo with his laundry cart. Hey, I don't want to be a downer, but doesn't that point to Okubo being the killer? 
Well, that's not my point, though. The evidence I showed you is... That evidence won't win you the case. What the hell's your problem? Was that Shintani? I think so. Get back here! <laughs> Uh, that bastard. Oh, it's eavesdropping on you. What the hell? Uh, I tried to stop him, but uh, he pulled a stun gun on me. Uh, uh. Hey, wait up! You won't get away. Sawasan? Let me go! We got a groper out here? Scum of the earth! <laughs> Not on my watch, you son of a bitch! Can all lawyers fight like that? Did you really need to run away like that? I assume you came to see me. There was something I wanted to talk to you about, yes. But I wasn't sure if I should. Then that pig-headed friend of yours started shouting, so I just lost it. Okay, but did you have to tase him? Not that he didn't have it coming. Anyway, I'm listening if you want to talk. No matter what it is, I'll keep your secret. Anything you tell me will fall under client's attorney privilege. Well, you know the witness who last saw Wakusan? Said he saw him sleeping in his bed. Uh-huh. Well, that witness is a man by the name of Shonosan. He's one of the scientists at the ADDC. Not only that, but he's the director's right-hand man, too. And this is him? 
Yes. He's a very dedicated doctor, so the nurses have a lot of faith in him. But something felt off when I heard what he had to say about the incident. And what's that? I guess I'm just skeptical as to whether or not he actually saw Wakusan. I don't think he's intentionally deceiving us, but he may be mistaken somehow. And if I had to guess, I'd say the other nurses feel the same. Still, why hasn't anyone mentioned this until now? How could we? Nurses talking about a doctor behind his back? That's not something a nurse could do without consequences. And if it came to a courtroom testimony... None of you would testify? Maybe the other nurses wouldn't, but I would. I never really fit in over there anyway. Besides... Yeah? I think Okubo-san is innocent. Oh, really? Sounds like I've finally got an ally on my team. I'm currently employed as a researcher at the Advanced Drug Development Center. Part of our research consists of clinical tests we perform on patients in the general ward of the center. On the day of the crime, I was making my usual rounds through the ward. And what time was that? Around 7.50. You're sure? Yes. The patients eat breakfast at precisely 8 o'clock. I always head to the break room myself, uh, right around then, too. This break room, to be precise? That's correct. Our more mobile patients walk there for breakfast instead of eating in their own rooms. Then, while the nurses help the patients eat, I ask about how they feel and how the medicine is treating them. And on the day of Wakusan's disappearance, you pass by his room before going to the break room? Yes. And in that room, you saw Wakusan lying on the bed? Yes. Can you describe the situation to us as you remember it? The door has a window, so you can see into the room from the hallway. And this is the room you're referring to, yes? That's correct. From where I was standing in the hallway, I could see Waku-san lying in bed. He was asleep, with a blanket covering most of his body. And what time was that? Around 7.50. No further questions. Yagami-sensei, why did you call her to the stand? She actually asked to testify. Is that a problem? Not really, no. Terasawa-san, you were present for Shono-san's testimony just now, yes? Yes. And what is your opinion on that testimony? For a scientist, I felt his wording was rather imprecise. And as a medical professional, I felt his actions were negligent. Could I ask you to be a little more specific? Our witness, Shono-san, claims he saw Waku-san sleeping in his bed during his morning rounds. However, there's no way he could have known that just by looking in from the hallway. I have evidence supporting Terasawa-san's testimony. Please look at this. It's a photograph of the victim's room as viewed from the hallway. In other words, this is what Shono-san would have seen when he checked in on Wakusan.
Shonosan was lying when he said he saw Wakusan in the bed. Excuse me? What he saw from the door was likely nothing more than a bulge of sheets. He couldn't have been able to identify it specifically as Wakusan. So to claim as much in his testimony seems like quite an exaggeration, don't you think? But common sense would dictate otherwise, would it not? Who would be in the bed other than Wakusan? The staff nurses are trained to always enter a room when checking in on a patient. In Wakusan's case, it's impossible to tell anything just by looking in from the hallway. There was actually one time a while back where we thought he was under the covers, only to find Wakusan eating in the break room a second later. And upon re-examining the room, we realized that we had mistaken a bunched up pillow for Wakusan. The witness makes an important distinction. The prosecution asserts that Shonosan's testimony is clear, that the victim was taken out of his room at some point between 7.50 and 8.30 in the morning. They claim that because of this time frame, the defendant must have smuggled Wakusan's body out in his laundry bin. But if Shonosan's testimony is invalid, as the defense asserts, we have to consider the possibility that Wakusan was taken in the middle of the night when nobody else was around. After which, the killer could have waited until the morning to plant the body in the defendant's truck. In other words, the defense establishes that there is reasonable doubt that Okubo-san is the killer, rendering the prosecution's central argument unsound. Your Honor, taking this new testimony into account, I'd like to call Shono-san back to the stand for cross-examination. Shono-san. Yes? I'll get right to the point. On the day of the crime, what did you see when you looked into Wakusan's room? I saw Wakusan asleep in his bed, I think. And did you get a clear look at his face? I don't remember. So it's possible that it could have been someone other than Wakusan in that bed. Or maybe even a pillow that you mistook to be Wakusan's body. Isn't that right? Objection! The defense is leading the witness. Sustained. Please rephrase the question. Shono-san, can you say without a doubt that Wakusan was in that bed when you checked on him? I... I, I don't think I can, no. Then the defense rests. But I do have a quick remark for the prosecution. Huh? The charges against my client stem from your assertion that he's the only possible suspect assuming the crime took place within the stated time frame. However, the defense has proven without a doubt that Shonosan's testimony is unreliable, establishing a reasonable doubt for my client. I would suggest then, that you withdraw the charges against my client. With such inconclusive evidence, you'll only be wasting the court's precious time. The prosecution does not consider the witness's testimony inconclusive. His memory of the incident may be fuzzy, yes, but that doesn't change that he saw the victim. So, your whole case is based on a fuzzy memory? This promising young man's future is at stake, and you're willing to throw that away on unreliable testimony? Dr. Shono is a bright and diligent researcher. After watching his own grandmother develop dementia, he vowed to create a drug that could cure the disease. After paying his own way through medical school, he went on to become the head researcher at the ADDC. Day after day, Dr. Shono visits his sick patients out of the kindness of his heart, leading to his valiant testimony here today. If you want to know whether I trust this man, then my answer is a resounding yes. In other words, because he's such a great researcher, his testimony is infallible. His own admission that he's not sure is somehow overlooked? Is that the sum of it? <clears throat> Because from here, it sounds like you're putting your faith in Shono-san's title, not his testimony today. The prosecution is not as easily swayed as you think. And you want to talk reputation? What of your client's history of domestic abuse? Six years ago, the defendant broke his girlfriend's finger. The 
poor girl is still suffering from the effects. And the cause? A minor, drunken disagreement. Now, fast forward to what occurred a few days prior to the crime. Wakusan, suspecting the defendant of stealing his wallet, lashed out and punched the defendant in the face. Given the clearly violent nature of Okubo-san here, that alone would be motivation enough to murder the poor old... Is something wrong, ma'am? Please remain seated while court is in session. Terasawa-san? Okubo-san is not a violent person. And he hasn't even had a drink in over six years. Not a single drop since the incident. My court will not stand for this commotion. He didn't blame Wakusan at all. He knew that the outburst was just caused by his dementia. That it was all the sickness's fault. So there was no reason for him to resort to murder. Terasawa-san, please. Okubo-san really is an incredible, caring person! Please leave this courtroom at once. You're right that he may be hard to approach, but he's a kind soul, and he always keeps his promises. Okubo-san's not the only person in this courtroom who would be affected by a guilty verdict, either. As a matter of fact, it would break my heart. And even through it all, he wanted me to keep this a secret! Not to tell anyone, not even his lawyer, that we were dating! Even though he knew he could have ended up in prison, making sure I was safe was the only thing in the world he cared about. That's just who he is! But when the prosecution has already decided he's a criminal, how could he possibly be given a fair trial? Her little outburst wasn't technically admissible, but as the trial dragged on, it hung over the jury like a stone. And in the end, Shinpei Okubo was found not guilty. But only a month after his release, everything changed. The same girl who had so bravely proclaimed Okubo's innocence died by the man's own hand. Hi. Something wrong? No, it's nothing, Vice Minister. But... I haven't seen you in about three years, Kido-san. I see you're still the director. You look familiar, but I can't quite place the name. I seem to recall you looking sharper. I'm a detective based in Kamurocho now. The name's Yagami. Ah, I remember now. You're the reason Terasawa-kun's no longer with us. Remember, Shono? Okubo-san was unstoppable. If only my testimony had been better. Shono-san, right? Does it matter? What brings you here anyway? I'm investigating a murder. And I'll need your cooperation with it. Just like old times. Yes, I see. Yes. Thank you. It does seem we received a phone call from this Shintani-san you speak of. Do you know who he was calling? Dr. Shona. The same Shono-san you were just with? Yes. However, it's unclear as to what the point of the call was meant to be. Shono was away from his desk at the time, you see, and Shintani-san didn't leave a message. You have no idea what he wanted to talk about? None. Shono says he doesn't know a Shintani-san, and sees no reason why he would be calling. 
Oh, really? <sighs> Shono and I co-authored the research paper on AD9. We're quite well known, as it turns out. Sometimes, complete strangers pretend to be close friends or relatives in order to contact us. Perhaps Shintani-san fell into that category. Have you heard of the mole murders taking place in Kamurocho, Dr. Kido? Three Yakuza, each one with their eyes gouged out. It's a grisly business. Shintani was killed in the same way. I've seen the news. Can you think of anything tying the ADDC to those murders? Huh? Look, just what are you implying? Look, I believe we're done here. There's nothing I can help you with. Please stop! You can't! Who are you? Detective Kuroiwa, Kamuro Police, Organized Crime. One of your guests here has information related to the case I'm currently investigating. That would be you, Yagami. Hmm? I'd like to speak to you as a material witness to the murder of the lawyer, Masamichi Shintan. Is that so? Mole's latest victim was the lawyer, Shintani. The last call he made brings the case that ruined Yagami three years ago back to the surface. A patient was taken from a hospital and found buried in the mountains. Yagami defended the suspect, Shinpei Okubo, and got an acquittal, but one month later, he murdered his girlfriend, Emi Terasawa, with a kitchen knife and burned the remains. I'd like to speak to you as a material witness to the murder of the lawyer, Masamichi Shintani. Is that so? I'm Hoshino, an attorney at Genda Law Office. Officer, is this interview voluntary, or...? It is. It's your call, Yagami-san. I think I'll pass. Excuse me? You have your answer, sir. You can go now. You can make this easier if you come now. Next time, it won't be voluntary. Your empty threats don't mean much to a lawyer. Can you take this elsewhere? I really must be... Too bad he's not a lawyer anymore, then. Your friend's nothing now. Just come along quietly. I'll come back with a warrant if I have to. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Why do you suspect me, anyway? I bet you don't even have a reason. I can come up with a few good ones. Enough! Get the hell out of my office! You'll regret this, Yagami. Karoyo-san! <sighs> you two! Out! Before we go, can we speak to Shono-san for a sec? We need to know why Shintani called him. Listen. I already told you he doesn't know. Get it through your skull. Now, please leave. No problem. We'll let you get back to work. This is really getting out of hand, don't you think? I can't believe that detective thinks you're a material witness. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. But what I'm more interested in is how he even knew where to find me. That's a good point. How would the police know we were here? Beats me. For now, let's focus on Shono, though. It would be a waste coming here and not talking to him. Agreed. Let's see if the receptionist can help us. Can 
I help you? Actually, I've already been here. I was just with Director Kido, remember? Um... Oh, of course. Did you forget something, sir? Well, not exactly. I'd actually like to speak to Shono-san, the 89 researcher. Where would I be able to find him? Let me see. Uh, that should be the research wing. I believe he's in the Protein Abnormalities Lab. Probably need a gold keycard to get in there, huh? That's correct, sir. I should be able to lend you one with the director's approval, though. Just give me a moment to ask. Could you tell me your name, sir? Actually, uh, never mind. Kido-san seemed pretty busy earlier. I'll try back later. Are you sure, sir? Good call. There's no chance Kido-san would let us in. At least now we know where Shono is. Yeah. I wonder if there's a map around here somewhere. This leads to the research wing. The receptionist said he would be in the Protein Abnormalities Lab, right? Huh. Well, I guess that's not on this map. Suspicious. This, this goes over to the hospital. I think Wakusan was up on the fourth floor. What the? Director Kido's office. We were just in there. Suspicious. The service entrance parking lot. All the delivery people come in and out through here. This is where Okubo's truck was parked three years ago. Hmm? What the? This is where we are now, the ADDC lobby. Hey. Some kind of security gate, huh? The research wing must be just past there. Um, excuse me. Yes, ma'am? This is one of Shono-san's researchers. She was just about to return to the lab. Oh? My name's Hashimoto. I can show you into Dr. Shono's lab if you'd like. Are you sure? Of course. <laughs> Great. We'll take you up on that. Wonderful. Hashimoto-san just happened to be passing through. Thank you. Right this way. I really appreciate this, Hashimoto-san. I'm Yagami. And I'm Hoshino, from the Genda Law Office. Thank you for doing this. Oh, don't mention it. I'm glad to help a guest of Director Kido's. This place is so massive, you practically need a tour guide to get around. I hope you're okay with walking. Oh, that's totally okay. So, Hashimoto-san, what kind of work do you yourself do here? I'm part of the team developing 89. Dr. Shono is the head of that team, but I'm pretty new around here. Speaking of, what exactly does AD9 stand for? Well, the AD comes from the name of the center. The Advanced Drug Development Center, ADDC. And it's the ninth drug our department's developed. Oh, that was surprisingly easy. It'll be the first dementia-curing drug on the market, right? Seems like it's really getting fast-tracked because of that. But there's a lot riding on this one, right? It could finally cure Alzheimer's disease. That's right. Do you know how many dementia patients there are in Japan alone? A couple hundred thousand, at least. Maybe even in the millions? Right. As of 2012, there were 4.62 million. That many? By 2025, that number will increase to at least 7 million. Potentially up to 13 million, including at-risk patients. That's one in every nine people. Yikes. However, as a nation, we're already at capacity in caring for these patients. 
In many cases, people over 60 are stuck looking after their dementia-struck parents in their own homes. Worldwide, it's estimated there will be 135 million patients by the year 2050. It's staggering. In other words, AD9 could save the world. This could be a real miracle. I gotta say, uh, this is making me feel kinda bad about how we treated Kido-san back there. Director Kido will go down in history if we achieve this. A lot's changed in three years. The bastard's really made a name for himself. Be nice. Dr. Shona was right over there. Well, if you'll excuse me. Shona-san. Yagami-san? But uh, how did you get in here? Hey, calm down. I just want to talk. I, I, I can't do that. Kido-san doesn't know you're here. Does he? Is there a problem? Oh, Ichinose-san. Uh, well, I... Uh... I've never heard you raise your voice, Shono-san. Aren't you the guy from the lobby? My name is Ichinose. I'm here from the Ministry of Health, offering political support to AD9's development. Kirosan called you Vice Minister. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Pretty lofty for a Vice Minister. You can boss scientists around, but I'm not biting. So I see. Shonosan, please. I just need a few minutes to talk. We'll leave right after we're done, promise. I already told you I, I can't. Not without Kirosan here. I need you to tell me. Why did Shintani call you? Shintani? I've never heard that name in my life. This is important, Shono. You have to have some idea. Please, I, I don't. Now get out of here. I'm calling Director Kido. Do what you want. Just let me ask you one thing first. <sighs> After Shintani was murdered, the killer gouged out both of his eyes. Three other near-identical murders have taken place in Kamurocho recently. Are you aware of that, Shono-san? Of course I am. It's all over the news. And you still have no idea why Shintani called you? Nothing at all? No, I don't. Now please let me get back to work. What the...? What are you doing here? Kido-san. I believe I told you to leave. What about that didn't you understand? I wanted to ask about Shintani's call. About which I already said Shono doesn't know anything. And I needed to hear that from him, not you. Enough. Call security. We were just leaving. Come on, hoshino I'll be filing a complaint with the Bar Association. Under the Minister's name. The Minister? Of health? That's right. Minister Kazami expects great things from AD9, and he won't tolerate distractions from your ilk. I feel like we came up empty handed. <sighs> Why would Shintani-sensei have called Shono-san? Yagami-san? That wasn't the first time I've heard about Minister Kazumi. Huh? When was it, though? Who was talking to me about the Ministry of Health? Maybe it was Mafuyu? I don't know. Have you even seen her lately, though, Yagami-san? I thought 
you know. Yeah, it's been a while. So that means... It must have been Ayabe, when we were drinking over a tender. I definitely remember him mentioning Minister Kazumi. We were talking about how the Kyore clan ended up in Kamurocho. Apparently, they're being used as muscle for a construction company called the Kajihira Group. A while back, Chairman Kajihira himself was going around, laying the political groundwork for a Tokyo revamp project. And one of the people he met with was Naohisa Kazumi from the Ministry of Health. Huh. You'd think he'd go to the Ministry of Land, though. His project has nothing to do with health. What would he gain from meeting Kazumi? That's true. Do you think it has to do with our case somehow? I don't know. Depends on what the two of them are talking about. In that case, maybe our Kajihira expert can help us out with that. Who? Sugiura-san. He used to work for them, remember? Oh yeah. So, you want to know how Kajihira and Kazumi are connected? Yeah. Any way you can find that out? Not really sure, but I'll give it a shot. Thanks. You're still at the ADDC, yeah? Just give me some time. I'll call you if I find anything. Oh, Yagami-san. Um, I'm gonna head back to the office. I just got an email from Saori-san. Apparently, a journalist named Hattori barged into the office. Says he wants to interview you. Me? It sounds like he's looking into Shintani Sensei's murder, too. Anyway, I'll go ahead and drive him off. <laughs> You'll be Genda Sensei's ace attorney before you know it. Nah, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Honestly. Why? Too much responsibility for a guy my age, you know? <laughs> I, I think I make a much better sidekick for now. <laughs> okay, but when that gets old? I don't know that it will. Being a professional sidekick for the rest of my life sounds okay to me. <laughs> I'll see you later. Hmm? Huh?
だヤガミさん